Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of my live tea tasting. I've got a great uh, tea for you guys today, and this is so. This is I've, I've been smelling this for the past half hour, and let me tell you, I am thoroughly excited uh, to get into this one because it's it's another puar. Uh, I it's I know I have done one uh, a little bit earlier in the month, but uh, this one is nice and raw. Uh, and, and, I mean, sorry, nice and cooked, and I just can't, I, I, I had to do it. <laughs> so tonight we'll be doing, uh, this one's called Raven Black, uh, and it's a black puar with, uh, deep earthy notes and, uh, choc uh, and a chocolate, uh, chocolate notes. Um, it's from Morose and Macabre, uh, Loose Leaf Tea Company. And let me tell you, man, this thing smells so incredible. I can't wait to, to dive right in. Uh, am I, am I, am I on? Because I'm trying to, oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> yeah, I was having some, uh, some loading issues. Uh, anyway, uh, Seha, thanks for joining me. Welcome, welcome. So first we're going to take a look at how deep, dark, and rich this color is. Look at that. It's com it's almost completely opaque. Like you can't see anything through it. Even if I'm like I'm looking at it live, I can't see my fingers going through both sides. It is super uh super opaque, uh super fragrant. Hey Zam, welcome. This one has very earthy uh a very earthy scent to it. Um it's kind of pungent, kind of uh, mushroomy, and it's it's very very dark, very rich. I'm gonna go ahead and take my first slurp. Ooh, that's a very rich flavor. Ooh, that's got some bite to it too. Um, this has, I'm, I'm tasting a lot of earthiness, a lot of, um, pungency, a lot, a, a lot more, uh, astringency than I thought I would for something this, uh, this dark. Mmm. It's a little bit on the astringent side. Uh, but not terribly icky. Um, right now I'm tasting it mostly the back of my throat under my tongue. And it's a very interesting thing. It's a very interesting sensation. Like I'm not really getting uh, a whole lot of that uh, bitterness up front. Hey Ma, welcome! Uh, but it's coming in the back uh, of my throat, both on top and underneath. Very interesting. Ooh, I kind of missed it there. <laughs> Just got a tiny, tiny bit when I slurped. There's also a little bit of a... Of a heavy mouthfeel, a little bit gritty, um, almost like, like a, uh, oh, what's the word? Like a, a, kind of like satin. It's very, very light, but it's like, like the texture is light, but the weight is a little heavy. It's a little bit grainy. It's very interesting. I'm getting like a lot of, um, a lot of like the smoky earthiness to it. Now, normally when I drink a puar like this, uh, it's very gradual. But since I did it for for 212 degrees. Uh, at five minutes right away, all the flavor, well, I can't even say all the flavor because most likely um, it's going to be, it, th these are meant to be steeped multiple times because they're so strong. 
So let's take a look at the actual tea itself. Uh, I'm surprised by the color. It's, it's not as dark as uh, usually uh, as usual puars I've had. It's kind of on the uh, brown on the lighter brown side. Um, I've actually seen black teas that were darker than this, but you know, like this is a good thing because it's got that flavor behind it. It's very very rich, um, high. It's a it's a high cocoa unsweetened flavor to it. Mmm. Ooh, that is good. It's it's good for now, but I'm curious to see how it's going to taste uh, when it cools off. I get the feeling that that bitterness is going to come out uh, a lot more towards the end. Uh, ooh. That is... It's biting. Like, I don't usually put uh, milk or, or sugar in my teas. I think that this would benefit from that. Um, what is that noise? Oh, it's my, <laughs> my planter. Is uh, The fountains just went on. Okay, never mind. I threw myself off there a little bit. Oof. Now, normally I wouldn't recommend sweetening it, putting any... Uh, Putting any milk or uh, or anything into a tea. Um, this one is is a little bit difficult for me. It's a little bit less palatable than most puars um, because of the richness of it. Uh, it's it's hitting me pretty hard. I wasn't uh, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. Hey, Jaren, welcome. Uh, it's very, ooh, it's like, it's like eating really, really, really dark chocolate with very little sweetener in it. Uh, and I mean, there is a market for that. People do eat that kind of chocolate. Um, I just haven't, like, that's not my favorite kind at all. However, the earthiness is kind of a, a, a of a saving grace. Because it's not just that astringency, it's not just that bitterness. Uh, it's got like a depth to it that I can that I can appreciate. <gasps> oh, excuse me. <gasps> oh, got the hiccups there. Hmm. <sighs> no, there's a bit of a woodiness to it. That's just like sitting on my tongue. Uh, it's supposed to be really good for you, but too bitter for me. Yeah, Puar is, is, is really, really good. Um, it's got a lot of good health benefits, but it's, it's hard to palate sometimes. Um, I've had Puars that were less bitter, but this one, I mean, it's not all bitter. You know, I've had, I've definitely had teas that were, that were, that were harder on the, uh, on the palate. But I get the feeling that the cooler it gets, the more bitter it's going to be. Um, so I would be more persuaded to drink this quickly rather than taking my time and, uh, and enjoy it or somehow find a way to keep it hot. So that that bitterness is maintained at a at a palatable level. Mm. I love that little the, that pungency as I breathe out. Um, it's giving me a lot of how do I put this? It's it's like it adds flavor where it lacks like for instance a lot of the uh a lot of the flavor is just that bitterness um and it, it, it sits on your tongue quite uh, for quite some time but that being said the surrounding 
flavors behind it um, are a bit of a saving grace because I'm getting you know there, there's other there's other flavors to uh, to notice if that makes sense. You know, I'm getting like the pungency, I'm getting the mushroominess, the uh, fancy cheese kind of sensation on my tongue, the cocoa, the, 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 the earthiness of it. It's very, very strong and I'm, I, like overall, I like it, um, but I do acknowledge that this is not going to be for everybody. Mm. Ooh. That is that is that is biting. Um I'm gonna I think I'll have to put some some sugar in this. Ooh, I'm gonna get some and milk. <laughs> I almost forgot I need something to start. Yeah, let's get some sugar in there. Okay. Yeah, let's let's <laughs> I'm gonna definitely have to to break my rule today. I was not expecting that. It's a little bit harsh, um, but overall it's not bad. If you can't take it, you know I can't take it. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean it's it's there there's definitely a market for it, but it's not for the general public. And that goes for Puar in in general. Uh, not a lot of people enjoy uh, a really dark puar. Um, I do on occasion, but uh, Suki, what are you doing? Go, go to mommy. Um, I do on occasion, but I love it when it's nice and earthy and not like overly astringent like this one is. Um, yeah, it, it smelled. It smelled. Quite quite a bit better uh, than than the taste but overall like I, I still find it more interesting uh, than than a lot of other of other teas mm, excuse me <laughs> Oof, it's hitting me hard poor is stinky yeah but in a good way it's like nice and smoky and earthy. Yeah. Woo. Mm, okay. Now that I put the the milk and the sugar in it, the chocolate taste is kind of coming out a little bit more. Um I'm getting a whole lot of, it's a very, it's a very slow burning tea. Ooh, and it's like, oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit here because it's, it's just sitting on my tongue being bitter. Um, I was not expecting it to, to go down this way. You know, I mean, the sign of a good puar is is balance. Uh, it doesn't have to be all earthy. It doesn't have to be all bitter. But it should have it should have different elements to it. Um, this one. Uh, no matter how you twist it, it's bad. I mean, there's no such thing as a bad tea because, you know, like, there is something that people like. You know, there's always a market for it. Um, 
Like, for instance, in India, they prefer the bitter, harsher teas. You know, they, they, they have the, uh, the Assams. Um, and that's just, you know, it, it's, it's what, what you drink it. Uh, I think that if I were to use this as a, as a milk tea rather than doing it in, in water, it might be more successful uh, for my palate. But I wouldn't say it's a bad tea. You know, it's just it's just a little bit hard on the uh, on the palate. I know that a lot of people are not going to be able to enjoy it, <laughs> but I mean, like, that's, that's more of an American thing, you know, like, we all like sugar and everything, um, we enjoy putting our, you know, making things sweet and, and uh, hey, Sneha, does it stink? I, <laughs> I mean, to me, it doesn't. I, I like the smell. I think I like the smell better than the taste. Um, because, again, I wasn't expecting it to be this uh, this heavy, you know, the, this rich. Um, I would not recommend it for a new tea drinker. Uh, I prefer my puwars to be more flat. Um, not flat, but more like deep. You know, have have more flavor than that bitterness. Ooh, but it is. It's 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 biting. Mm. The milk and sugar do help quite a bit. Um, I think does old puar equal good puar? I mean, the older. Generally, the older the better, but you know, quality does the quality of leaf does play into it as well. Um, and like I said, there's no such thing as a bad uh, as a bad tea, but there's there's tea with different uh, qualities that people actually that, that's more popular, more popular qualities, right? Like I said, it, it smells, to me, it smells really nice. It's it's reminiscent of, like, that smoky, um, kind of like a, 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 a s'mores. Less on the sweet side, but more on the earthy, smoky graham cracker spectrum. Um, but by that being said, you also have the pungency to, to contend with. Uh, you don't really smell that bitterness uh, that it that it has. However, it is reflected in the uh, on the palate itself. Um, now going back to what uh, let's say I was asking if age uh, helps it out. Uh, it should because you know being a puar, the age uh, does matter, but. Uh, you know that also that also blends into the quality of leaf. <gasps> oh, excuse me. So I don't know how much age would help this. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. This tea. Oh, I got the hiccups because it's already got whatever qualities it's going to be, and they'll just deepen from there. Uh, it would. Uh, I would imagine. I would like to, to imagine, anyway, that the earthiness will overtake the bitterness. Um, but there's no way to tell today. Uh, we'll have to wait about, I don't know how, how old this is. But generally between 15 to 35 years is when the flavor reaches its peak. So if I were to hold on to this for that long, which I don't think I will... Um, it's going to be a matter of, you know, how, how much it aged, how well it was stored, um, you know, how, 
to, to, to get that kind of uh, flavoring, flavor profile that we're looking for. Uh, so that being said, there's no way to really tell uh, what would improve it uh, if it if it needs to be improved uh, within the next few years. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor. Questions, comments, anything you want to talk about, now is the time. Uh, I'm going to open up the questions with Teresa's favorite question, what would I pair this with? Um, being that it's it's heavy, it's like a very earthy flavor to it, I would go with roast beef. Or some, would I would I sell this? Not at first. I would love to sell Poirs. Um, this particular one, I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to wait until it's aged. Um, I would love to get like a, a, a supplier that's tried and true. Uh, one that I can get a small disc and sample for myself and say, okay, so this is the type of quality I can expect, uh, from this, from this vendor. But... Uh, this one in particular, I would have to know the farm itself and then to see their record. Um, it's easy for, for wholesalers to just put a, a, a label on the poire and send it overseas, um, or sell it within the United States and, you know, like, there's no, there's no background to it. This one, as it is now, I would not sell, uh, mainly because, one, generally, Puars are really difficult to sell, uh, and two, this one in particular is so, so bitter, it would be hard to get somebody in America to enjoy it. Uh, but I would like to eventually sell a Puar if I could... Uh, if I can find the right one. Um, so what else? What else would I pair this with? Uh, roast beef, um, something like a pastrami. Maybe a hot pastrami would go well with this, because the juiciness of the meat I can see counteracting the uh, the bitterness a little bit, uh, and that saltiness would add would add to the flavor. Maybe get a little bit of mustard in there. That would definitely, that would definitely help it out. So that being said, <laughs> uh, let's go to Katz's Deli. Yeah, I I would love to, uh, I thought they were closed though. I thought I heard some that they had closed recently. Um, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I heard wrong. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up. Um, but speaking of segues, the, the I wanted to talk a little bit about the Chicago Tea Festival. Um, we are we're ramping up. It's it's about a month away, and the tickets are going to start to sell even uh, even faster. We're getting uh, we're still selling it on, uh, selling them online, and a lot of my uh, a lot of my class tickets are already sold. We've got five left. Um, and I get the feeling that there, by, by the time the tea festival comes, we're going to sell out. So I would, if you're in the Chicago area, I would definitely recommend, uh, coming over and, and, uh, picking up your ticket. Uh, we are getting our booth assignments pretty soon. Um, and you guys may have seen, I have the, thank you, thank you, uh, I posted some pictures of the bags that we're that we're gonna be selling. Um, the pouches, I think. I don't. I don't know if I did the pouches. Um, but yeah, we got bags. We got pouches. We're gonna start packing it in. Everything is 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 going according to plan. Uh, so now we're gonna have a lot of uh, we're gonna have a lot of work to do to get those things finalized. No, uh, for the next month, we're gonna be <laughs> we're gonna be super busy, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, this is gonna be the beginning of a beautiful, beautiful thing, 
and I really have confidence that we'll be uh, we'll be successful, and we'll continue that upward mobility until we get to wherever it is we're meant to get to. Um, in the meantime, I am enjoying this very, very much. I never thought that I would be in this position where I would have my own tea uh, to sell. So that being said, I want to express how grateful I am to everybody who has been a support in my life and who has been there for me, encouraging me, pushing me to keep going even when it was really, really difficult to, uh, to see a way to this point. Um, but you know, everything happens for a reason. It took this, it took this long and it's going to take even longer until the end. So <laughs> that being said, I am certainly looking forward to this new chapter, uh, in my life. And, and, you know, as corny as that sounds, that's exactly what it is. Um, starting a whole new way of life and... You know, I'm looking forward to seeing the interesting places that it takes me. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close out for the night. Thank you all for joining me. This has been a wonderful, uh, a wonderful experience. Uh, if you're interested, I'll try to get the uh, the link in the description. I don't know if they have a website. Um, and <laughs> you too, Ma, have a wonderful weekend. I will share the link in there. Um, and then if you guys are interested, you can get a, you can get your own, uh, your own, your own flavor. If you, if you like bitterness, <laughs> I would, I would definitely recommend it then. Uh, so until next time, have a great night, a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you later. Bye.